Hello everyone, welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to attempt to answer one of our viewers question. In our prior tutorial, Rope Constraint and Winch Motor, a viewer asked, Sorry if this is a bit late, but how can it attach to a player? I want the player to be dragged with a motor. Well, my friend, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to attach a rope to a player. We're not exactly going to build a motor to drag the player, but hopefully you can use the same concept to build your own motor and to see if it can drag the player. In this tutorial, we're going to build a Roblox Spider-Man. So the player is going to be like Spider-Man and he's going to be shooting out a web and then he's going to be swinging on a part. All right, so now let's go to studio and see how we can do that. Here we are inside Roblox Studio and for this tutorial we're going to be focusing on mostly these two parts over here. So the red part here is called ceiling and the blue part is called floor. And just make sure your two parts are anchored. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the floor and we're going to add a script. Basically what I want to do is I want to have this floor to be the trigger. So when the player steps on this floor it's going to trigger the player to shoot out the web to the red part. The player is going to be ascending up to the part. He's going to be swinging on the rope. In order to make that trigger, I'm going to go to my floor and we have added the script. We're going to insert a touch event into this floor. So let's declare our floor local part equals to script dot parent. Let's also declare the ceiling. So we're going to say local and we'll call it ceiling equals to game dot workspace dot ceiling. And now we're going to insert our touch event for the, uh, for the floor. Our floor is the part right here. So we're going to say part dot touch colon connect to a function and our function is going to have a part B passed in. The part B is the part of the player that is touching this, this uh, floor, this part here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for humanoid that is touching the part. So we're going to say local humanoid equals to part B which is the part that is touching this floor dot parent. And if it is a player that is, that is touching the part, then it, it is the character, right? And then we're going to look for, we're going to do a find first child humanoid. So we're testing to see if this is a player, a character that is touching this part. Now we're going to say if humanoid then we want to turn off the can't touch property of that part. We only want to record one single touch. So we're going to say part dot can't touch equals false. Now here's what I'm going to do. So when the player touches this part, I'm going to put an attachment up here, right? And I'm going to put an attachment to the hand of the uh, character. And after that, we're going to connect the two attachments with a rope constraint with a winch motor that's going to pull the, the player up in the air and then the player can swing around on the rope. Let's go back to our script. So now we're going to build our first attachment. Let's declare a new variable local and we'll call it attachment. We'll set it equals to um, we're going to start with the ceiling first. So we're going to say ceiling, find first child, attachment. So we're looking for an existing attachment that is attached to the ceiling. If one exists, we don't need to create a new one. If, if it doesn't exist, we're going to create a new one. Because we only need one attachment to be attached to the ceiling. Here we're going to say if not attachment 
means that the ceiling doesn't already have an attachment. So if not attachment, then we're going to have to create an attachment for the ceiling. Attachment equals to instance dot new. We're creating a new attachment. So it's going to be a new attachment. We're going to rename this attachment. So attachment dot name. We'll just call it attachment zero. And then we're going to set the parent of this attachment dot parent equals to the ceiling. All right, so we are done with building the attachment that is going to be attached to the ceiling. We're going to have to do the same thing to the player. Now, let me just play this and I want to show you something. I want to show you where we're going to place the attachment on the player. So when I play the, the game, if I go to workspace and I see my character here, if I expand my character, I'm going to see that the character has all these parts. So I'm going to pick a part here to attach the, the rope to. And that part, I think it's going to be the left hand. So it's going to be either the right hand or the left hand. In this case, we're going to use the left hand to attach the, the rope. So the, 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 our Spider-Man is going to be shooting web out of his left hand. Let's go back to studio. And now I'm just going to copy this whole block. And I'll paste it down here. We don't need to declare the attachment again, but we're going to use the same variable for this attachment, which we're going to place on the player's hand, on the character's hand. In this case, we're going to look for an existing attachment that is already on the character's hand, right? So we're going to say, let's see, the character is part B dot parent. So that's the character and we're going to go to the hand. So it's going to be dart. I believe we say left hand. So it's going to be dart left hand. And we're looking for an, an attachment on that left hand, right? So find first child attachment. Again, if not attachment, if we don't see an attachment in his left hand, we're going to create a new attachment. And this time we're going to call it attachment one. And we're going to set the parent of that attachment to the character left hand. So let's take a look, see what we have so far. We have a touch event to the uh, part at the bottom, to the floor. As soon as somebody touches that part, we're checking to see if it's a character that is stepping on the part. If it is a character, we're turning off the can touch and we're creating an attachment to attach to the ceiling and another attachment to attach to the left hand of the character. All we have left to do now is to create the uh, rope constraint to attach the two parts together. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say local and let's call it rope equals to instance dot new and we're creating a new hinge constraint no not really a new rope constraint there we go and now i'm going to attach my rope to the two attachments up here so the first attachment i'm going to attach the rope to it's going to be rope dot attachment zero and we'll attach that to the first attachment up here, which is the ceiling dot attachment zero. And our rope dot attachment one is going to be attached to the player's left hand. So that's going to be. Let me copy this. 
part b dot parent dot left hand dot attachment one next we're gonna set all these properties for the rope which we learned in our prior tutorial on rope constraint so the length of the rope i'm gonna give it 50 which is a a, a little bit uh, longer than the distance between the player and the ceiling so it's gonna take some time for the player to go to uh, ascend to go up and to use the winch motor you need to turn winch enable to true and the winch speed is going to be 1 and winch target is going to be 10 so when it reaches uh, this target it's going to stop the player is going to stop going up once it reaches the target of 10. The only thing left to do here is to set the parent for this rope constraint so rope dot parent and we're going to set the parent to, to be the ceiling so it's going to be ceiling all right, so I think that's everything. We, we built the first attachment, we built the second attachment, and then we built a rope constraint to attach the two attachments together. Our winch motor is gonna wind the player, it's gonna bring the player up in the air, and then once it reaches the target, it's gonna stop. Let's now play and take a look. And that's the floor right there. You can see the ceiling is up here, the floor is down here. I'm gonna go and step on the floor and you can see some something is moving the player right if i go to the workspace here and i open the ceiling th there's the rope constraint let's take a look you, you see the, the see the rope constraint is trying to uh, pull the player up right here and there's the rope constraint so uh, you see the length of the rope is, is shorter than the distance now but look at Look at that, my player is still stuck on the floor until I jump and then it pulls the player up. And actually, there is one more thing that we need to add here. Let's play again, take a look. I'm gonna look for my floor, there it is. And right now, you see, uh, we cannot see the rope here until we go into the workspace and go to the ceiling and click on the rope constraint to see the rope, right? So let's go back to the script. I think the reason for that is the visible property here is the default is, uh, is uh, false, so it's not visible. Let's go back and we're gonna turn it on inside the script. So here we're gonna say rope dot visible equals true. Hopefully that would fix it. Let's play again, take a look. Here I am, I'm gonna go and hop on the floor and immediately we see the rope. So now it's working and the rope is, is very long right now. It, it's gonna shorten, the winch motor is gonna shorten it. Okay, and now it's pulling me but for some reason I'm stuck to the floor here. So th this is why I don't know if the, that viewer's question is gonna work because I need to jump in order to get off the floor. And now the winch motor is, is winding me up, is pulling me up until I reach the top and I can swing around. And again, it would be really cool if you can just make a new block here and then make a new rope constraint and destroy this old one. So it's gonna make it look like Spider-Man is swinging from one block to another block. I'm actually very curious now if this is gonna be able to drag the player on the ground. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on this part, which is the ceiling. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom over here somewhere. All right, and I'm gonna move this part here a little bit further out. All right, so this is where the winch motor is, it's inside this part. Let's see if it's gonna be able to drag the player towards in this direction. Let's now play and find out. So 
So again, I'm going to go and hop on to the blue floor here. And if it works, it should this part here should drag the player in this direction. Let's find out. Okay, and there's the rope. And I'm being dragged. Look at that. It's working. Look at that. So there you go. This answer that viewers question about how to make a motor, a winch motor, to drag the player into this direction. And if you want to make it, if you want to drag the player faster, I think you can change the speed. Because right now it's going pretty slow. Let me try and change the speed. So let's go back to the script instead of winch speed of one we're gonna make it 10 and let's play again and take a look i'm gonna go and hop onto this floor again and where's my port is over there here we go wow it's a little bit faster but still not crazy fast how about if we how, how about if we make it a hundred? I'm gonna change I'm gonna change this to 100 and one last try. Hop on. Bang! <laughs> oh, it's still not that fast. I'm walking towards the uh, the block. But I'm still walking, I'm not being dragged, you know, on, on the ground. But it's winding me in. I'm curious now, how about we make it 10,000? Can we do it? I think there's a maximum, so I'm not really sure what is the maximum. Let's play and take a look. And here we go. Now I think that's it. That, let me see what is the maximum. So we're going to go to the ceiling. We're going to go to the broken stream. And we're going to see what is... Oh, winch force. You know what? Maybe we can change the winch force as well. I think that, that would do it. So winch speed. Let's make it 100,000 and we're going to change the winch force dot winch force to how about 1 million. Okay, one last try and I, I know I said that before, but I'm curious to find out. Here we go. Oh man, that is crazy. All right, there you have it. That's your answer uh, for the viewer that asked the question. That is how you do it. Hey guys, before we go, I just want to point out a little bug in the code here. You can see that here we're naming our attachment attachment zero. So when we're looking for an existing attachment, we should be looking for attachment zero here. And the same goes for the attachment on the player's hand. We're naming it attachment one. So when we're looking for the attachment, we should be looking for attachment one. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, take care and we'll see you in the next tutorial.